Hi, in this video I'm going to be comparing a 100 amp max 60 amp continuous fan cooled PWM against the stock version and one that's mounted in a box for your kayak. I will be taking temperature readings to see if the controller runs hotter inside a box or if the fan will allow it to stay cool. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. These are the PWMs I'm going to be testing in this project. Now they are both 100 amp max, 60 amp continuous current, 12 volt PWMs. These have a fan inside the box which is meant to cool off a larger size heat sink than the earlier models. Now I use the same model to make my box project that you see on the right and I will include a link to that video in the narrative of this video. And I'm going to measure the heat for both these PWMs at four different points. One's going to be at 25% of power, the next is at 50% of power, the next is at 75% of power, and then lastly it'll be at 100% of power output from the PWM and I will then measure at each one of those points the temperature of the heat sink of each of these PWMs using this infrared heat gun and I'm going to try and be consistent and measure them in the same spots for all the testing. There is something I want to make very clear. This is not a scientific experiment. There are way too many variables in this for this to have any real scientific value. What it is is kind of a ballpark idea just to let people know if putting that PWM inside a box for use on your kayak is going to cause much more internal heat in the box causing the PWM to fail. So the goal of this project video is to just make sure that there's not that big of a difference in temperature between the stock PWM and the one that's enclosed in the box. So hopefully at the end of this video I'll be able to give you a determination of that. Now you're probably wondering how am I going to measure the maximum percentage of amps being drawn by the trolling motor. And I built this, and I can leave the link in the narrative, which will give me an output of the percent power that the PWM is putting out. And then over here, it's going to read the amount of amps. So that's how I'm going to be able to measure what values I need for this test. I just wanted to show you how everything's hooked up. I have my power going to the trolling motor, which is set at setting 5, which will allow for full amps to run through it. I have my 12-volt battery down there in the bottom, and then I have my amp meter power box right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the test, and the batteries are reading about 12.5 volts and looks like there's a residual amp in there of about 0.3. So I'm going to go ahead and take the first amp reading at 25 percent. At 25 percent I'm reading about one amp drawn. Gonna go up to 50 percent. And it's about 5.5 amps drawn, 75%. And it's about 12.2 amps. We'll take it all the way to 100%. And we've got about... 24 and a half amps drawn.
So those are going to be the values that I measure when I take my heat readings so I know I'm at 25, 50, 75, and 100% of the power. Now I'm going to need to measure my reference points for this test. And I've got my DC amp meter here. And once I reach 100% output for the trolling motor, I'm going to take that amperage reading. And I'll do the same thing at 75, 50, and 25%. Then I'll know whatever amp reading I have, that will be the corresponding percentage of power for the trolling motor. Okay, now I have the 100 amp stock PWM hooked up and I will take it to 25%. And I will go ahead and run it for five minutes and take a temperature reading. Okay, so the five minutes have gone by. Let's go ahead and take a reading. And I've got about 50 degrees. Time to ramp it up to 50%. Okay, and I will check back in five minutes. All right, I'm going to take my reading at 50%, and it's about 50 degrees. Now I'm going to ramp it up to 75%. All right, be back in five minutes. All right, time to take a 75% temperature measurement. And it's 51 degrees. I'm gonna ramp it up to 100%. See in five. All right, time to measure the hundred percent. Fifty-three and a half. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the same PWM mounted in the box. Okay, now I'm going to do the one hundred amp. PWM in the box and this one I made with a remote and this setup was a little bit tougher to do but we'll get through it. So I'm going to start it up at 25%. Be back in five minutes. All right, time to take the temperature reading at 25%. It's about 48 degrees. So I'm going to ramp this up to the 50%. Be back in a few. Okay, I'm going to take the temperature reading at 50%. And it's about 49 degrees. Let's ramp this up to 75%.
See you in a few. And this will be our reading at 75%. Fifty two degrees. Wrap it up to a hundred percent. And this is the final reading for the one hundred amp PWM in the box at a hundred percent. Fifty four degrees. I went ahead and listed the results just in case somebody wanted to actually look at them. And I want to reiterate that just some of the variables of the test were that the power percent was approximated for each runtime and the values were rounded up per numerical guidelines. And I bought the PWMs from different lots at different times. And the ambient temperature the day of the testing fluctuated between 40 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit and the error tolerances for all the equipment is unknown to me and I also had a lot of coffee to drink that day. So basically what these estimated non-scientific results tell me is that the PWM fan does a good job keeping the unit at a relatively constant temperature even when enclosed in a box. I will repeat this test during the summer months with higher ambient temperatures. Of course your results may and probably will vary. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.